Okay, welcome to another video. Today we're going to check out Mabox Linux, which is a Manjaro based Linux distribution which uses Openbox Windows Manager. So it's inspired by Crunchbang and it uses some Bunsen Lab utilities which have been adopted for Manjaro. So I've never actually heard of Mabox Linux until someone in my Bunsen Labs video recommended it in the comments. So I've downloaded the ISO which is 1.6 GB in size. I then went to see if it's got a page on DistroWatch. It's currently in the evaluation stage on DistroWatch. So if it gets enough recommendations for it to be evaluated, it will be on their page ranking system. So what we're going to do now is jump into the installer, which is Calamares version 3.2.20-1. So it's picked up the correct language, which is British English. So once that module loads, we can go forward. There we go. Right, so we're not New York. We're right about there. Perfect. English UK, that's correct. Keyboard layout is fine. Okay, so I'm actually going to install on a USB SSD, the Samsung portable SSD T3. However, some Linux distributions in the installer, it fails creating the partition. So what might happen is we'll erase the disk and hopefully it will work, but it could potentially fail when it actually comes to creating the partitions. If that happens, we're going to go into FDisk and create the partitions ourselves manually and then restart the installer. Fingers crossed we don't need to do that though. So let's go to next, type in our user account. Let's call this one Tyler Boxy. And we are going to use the same password for the administrator and we're going to log in automatically. Okay, let's go for install. Install now. Right, cross our fingers. That, okay, cool. So it has crashed. So it's dev SDA that we need to create some partitions on. So what we're going to do is jump into a terminal. Let's drag that up there. So the terminal appears to be Terminator. And we're going to use FDisk now to create the partitions. So that is dev SDA. So we're going to go sudo FDisk dev slash SDA. And now we're just going to destroy anything that's already there. So we're going to press D. Nothing's there. So we're going to do a nice simple layout. We're going to do two partitions, one EFI and one root, and that's all we're going to do. So we're going to go for N, which is new. Enter, enter, plus 300 MIB. That's going to be for our EFI partition. And we're going to remove the signature that's already on there. Okay, that one's done. And now we're going to go N again, and we're just going to enter all the way through it now because we're going to use the remaining space for that partition. Now we're going to go W. Right, now what we need to do is actually just make those file systems. So we're going to go make fs.fat-f32 dev slash sda1. So that is for the EFI partition there, fat32. Make, oh, we've put a T there that doesn't need to be there. Make fs.fat, there we go. Now we're going to do the same for dev sda, but we're going to make that ext4. ext4, bang. Okay, so now we're just going to do an LSBLK to make sure that has made the partitions correctly. Dev SDA, here we are. So we have two partitions there, and that's what we're going to use now to create our Linux distribution on. So let's get out of that and restart this installer. Now, that should work. I've had this happen in the past with different distributions on this SSD. And hopefully that has remedied it, and we can get ahead with this installer now. So we're going to let that load the module for the last time. Any second now, bang, right, let's go to next. Jump back there like we was in the beginning. Yep. Right, so we're going to go for a manual partitioning on this one here, and we're just going to set it up properly. Right, so we're going to delete this FAT32 and then recreate it in here. So let's go to delete, go to new, or create, and we want FAT32, mount point, boot EFI, and we're going to chuck the boot flag there. And then this is going to be formatted and we're going to chuck that on root and hopefully that will work and won't make me look stupid. Right, Tyler Boxy. Again, we're going to use the same for the administrator and login automatically and we're going to go for install. Okay, let's see how we go. Brilliant, so it's making that now. I'm going to pause the video here. The time is currently 11.04, so we're going to see how long it takes to install. Okay, so the installation has completed at about 11.09, so you're looking at about a five minute install on a SSD. Do get quite good speeds on that Samsung SSD, so I'm not too worried about that. 
So what we're going to do now is pause the video, reboot, I'm going to set up a screen mirror and then we're going to jump into it and take a little look around. Okay, so we've just booted into our freshly installed Mabox Openbox desktop. So we've got a little welcome screen here, Mabox 20.02 Calanthe. Welcome Tyler, thank you for choosing Mabox Linux. We hope that you enjoy using Mabox as, we, as much as we enjoy building it. The links below will help you get started with your new operating system. So we've got a update system, add kernel, install popular apps, and we've got some resources for quick guide, website, forum, and then we've got some development and donate buttons there. So we might go through that in a moment. But first of all, I just want to take a little look around. So it's quite an interesting setup to be fair. I quite like the way it looks. So we've got a couple of con keys on the bottom left and the top right. We have a panel at the top here, which I'm going to assume is tint two. Let's just go into the applications, accessories. It's not there, is it in settings? There we go, so this is the Tint 2 panel. And I actually quite like it, so you've got sort of a transparency element in the middle there, and then you have desktop switches there, two, three, four, so there's one. Okay, so one is at the start of your sort of task list there. You then have your clock, and you also have PAMAC, no, nope, that's the Ethernet, PAMAC is there. There we go. Then we have our sound there, with a little volume slider. And um, what's this one here? Let's get out of that. Okay, so that's our power management settings and it's using the XFCE power manager. Nice. Okay, so let's see what these screen, um, these um, shortcuts are on the bottom left of this screen here. So run is the super windows key, let's press that. Okay, so that's like a right click I'm gonna imagine. Yep, so that's the right click. And it has a little search box up the top. So let's say, what's the files manager? If we type in file and then we'd open that. Okay, so that's PC Man FM, I do believe. There we go. So we've got PC Man FM as our default files manager there. And then what are the other keys? So we have Super and F. So we can just open the files manager like so, just Super and F. Menu, Super and Spacebar. Okay, that is what we just opened, wasn't it? Super plus Spacebar. Okay, not to worry. And then we have run, which is super and m slash of2. So let's try that, super and m. Nice, you get a little D run here where you can launch programs from as well. Let's test that out with a program like Genie. Bang, perfect. And what else do we have down at the bottom left here? So we can get into the terminal with super and t, which is terminator. And can we do it with control alt t as well? We can indeed. So it'll open them up in a task list like that, side by side, and you can minimize it. Nice, working all good so far. So what else do we have? We have volume control, which is super and V. Is it pulse audio? Is that pulse? I think that might be pulse, let's have a look. So what was run again, super and M. Yeah, so it's got pulse audio, volume control. Let's see what else we got. So we can toggle the compositor. We won't bother toggling that though, we'll leave it as is. So we can jump to the lock screen with super and L, bang. Can we get out of that? Okay, I'm not getting a box for the login. How do we get back into it? There we go, so we just type in the password like that and hit enter. Quite cool actually, I quite like the look of that. So let's test that out once more. Right, so we're in our lock screen. If we type in our password, mash enter, bang and we're in. Okay, I'm quite a fan of that. So that's the lock screen. We can then use X kill, which is super and K. Exit is super and X. Side panels. So side panels, so places left is control and tab. Huh, okay, this is interesting. So what do we have here? Some quick navigation for home folders and stuff like that. So we could jump into the folders by just going open files manager there. Okay, that's pretty cool. So I guess that's what this arrow does. Yes, it is. Okay. And we have a little file system search there as well. Nice. I like that. So then the panel to the right is super and tab. Okay. So we have another search box up the top there. Then we have system update. So we've got the software management there. Settings. Okay, I quite like this uh, sort of interface to the right and the left. I think that's pretty cool with these side panels here. So then we can make them larger and smaller. So we are currently on, does it tell us what we're currently on? Let's go to normal. So that's normal. Let's try tiny. 
Okay, that's very tiny. And let's go to small then. Nice, I really like this idea actually. Let's go back to normal. Brilliant, that's pretty cool. Okay, what else have we got? So we've got Windows, Close, yep, that's fine. Show Desktop. Okay, Desktop Switching is Super and then the F1 Function Key to 4. So let's go to F2, 3, 4, back to 1. Okay, that's not too bad. I'll probably change that personally. That's a bit of a tricky one for me to get with my thumb and my fingers there. Nice, and then the Conkey at the top is just System Information, Date of Time, CPU Usage and RAM. So let's see what applications this thing comes installed with them. So we have the terminal, which we already know is Terminator. Files brow uh, Internet browser is Firefox. Files manager is PCMan FM. And then we can expose all of the applications by going into here. So it uses Covantum Theming Manager as well. Okay, so what is the currently configured theme? Let's go to Change Delete Theme. So it's the default Covantum. Okay. Oh, wrong one. Let's keep moving. So that's accessories. Oh, it uses nitrogen as well to set your wallpapers. Let's see what other wallpapers it comes installed with out of the box. Oh, a fair few to be fair. I actually use this one on one of my own computers. I quite like this wallpaper. Nice. Not bad. Getting a bit of a green line down here. I think that's... Oh, and then if we do that, we then show our CPU cores and sort of get a little uh, system monitor going. Okay, I really do quite like the interface of this so far. Right, let's go back to the default wallpaper that we had it on. What was it? Oh, God. I've got to try and remember now. It was like a greeny, bluey thing, wasn't it? Uh, <laughs> was it this? Potentially. Okay, we'll leave it at that for now anyway. Okay, cool. So it uses Nitrogen for the wallpaper settings. Graphics, we have View Noir. Internet, we have Web Browser. That's just an FXE link that you get. Modem, modem Manager GUI. Mail Reader. Do we have a Mail Reader installed out of the box? We don't. So there's no email clients. You might want to install an email client if you like desktop email clients. So in Office now, nothing really in there apart from QPDF View. Programming, you've got Genie. Sound and Video now, we have dead beef audio player i've not actually used that before mpv media player okay pulse audio qt all right not too bad you've got a volume mic on there as well so in system tools it comes installed with gparted out of the box terminator like we did say is our terminal and now in preferences is where you can set a lot of the stuff up so we have software update qt5 settings panel manager which will jump you into the tint 2 panel themes and here's all the current themes that they have ready to go. They've just disappeared on us. So this is the layout that we've got at the moment and we can move things around. But let's um, let's leave it like that. I do quite like that layout. So here's our themes now. Let's have a look at some of these default themes that we've got. Okay, fair few themes. So in the installer, one of the messages was a sort of program to change the look and feel so let's go into my box control center so here is a little control center so we can go into A&R here which is where we set up our screen mirror we have info for NeoFetch let's jump into NeoFetch oh I like the icon in NeoFetch as well nice so package wise we've only got 909 packages so that's pretty good it's quite light from what I can tell the Windows Manager theme is my box super desk icons are vertex mayor and of course the Windows Manager is open box. Okay, so what can we do in here? Then let's jump straight into software. So we can install popular applications, preferred applications, add and remove and do a software update. We'll do an update in a moment. So here we can do our auto start, that's pretty handy. Okay, look and feel, so what have we got here? So customize look and feel, let's try this. Is this just gonna open the theming? Yes, yeah, so that'll open up the theming. There's quite a lot of themes there ready for you to actually use to be fair. Oh, it's even got my favourite theme there, which is Arc Dark. Nice. So I think that is LX Appearance, from what I can tell. Icons-wise, even comes with Arc Icons as well. Okay, I quite like the sort of choice of themes and icons that are installed out of the box. So we've checked out the wallpaper. Openbox Configuration Manager, which is where you can change the sort of things for Openbox, like the theme and etc. Do we have the Openbox Arc controls on here? We do indeed. Nice, okay, we'll check that out in a moment. I want to find the program to actually change the look and feel. So what's themes? There we go, my box theme manager. Let's have a look at this. 
So it comes installed with a few themes here. So we've got Bunsen, Chicago, Dark Mayo, Mabox, Quake World, and Rainforest. We're currently on Super Desk. Let's try some of these out then. Right, so it's going to restore in config saved as collection name Bunsen, and that's going to change the GTK theme. It's going to do something with Conky and the Tint 2 panel. Let's have a look then. Okay, so we get a full panel now with no transparency or stuff in the middle. And then we get quite a light dark greyish theme. I don't mind that either to be fair. Nice. And the theming, I do believe that is new mix now. So let's jump into the appearance package and see what that's actually done for our theming. So where's look and feel gone? Look and feel, look and feel. I'm just being a little bit blind at the moment. Customise look and feel. There we go. So the theming for the widgets now is Bunsen HE and the icon theme is Gnome Carbonite. Okay, I'm not actually too aware of this theme to be honest with you. Nice. Quite like the greys there for the file, uh, folder icon and stuff like that. Right, let's try a different theme now. So it's now X'd out everything that we're not using and giving us a little tick on the ones that we are. So let's check out Chicago 95. So I'm going to guess this is like Windows 95 aesthetic inspired. There we go. So it's moved our panel to the bottom. Wow, this is a uh, pretty retro looking, isn't it? So we still have the side panels. So you've got a little um, penguin at the left, uh, the bottom of the left panel there. Nice. I actually quite like this so far. Okay, we're not going to leave it on Chicago 95 though. So let's check out Dark Mayor. Let's install that one. Click OK. Okay, it's not changed the uh, theming on there. Wow, okay, so that's now moved our panel to the left and then our right and left panel toggles are at the top, just above the main menu button. And then we get some quite large buttons there. So it's a bit like a sort of MXE Linux kind of layout like that. Oh, okay, and then it gives you a red sort of focus when you're going over the icons. Nice, like that. Right, so I think we're nearing the end of these ones now. So we've got to check out Quake World and then Rainforest. Let's have a look. Okay. Whew, that's nice as well. I really do like the theming on these uh, themes that they've included. So we've got a battery low icon for some strange reason. So now we've got a shorter panel sort of centered in the middle. Again, you've got your left and right panels there that look pretty nice there with sort of a brownish transparency color. I think that's what that is. And again, it's going to keep your first workspace in front of your task list. Okay, now I'm really liking this so far. Let's check out Rainforest. Okay, so it's changed the um, icon color, uh, the text color for these widgets to green. And then the actual widget, the application windows have got sort of a pale green to them as well. And now again, we've got a bottom panel layout. So the system tray is quite a sort of a bright and vibrant green. And the rest of that is, I don't know what color you would call that. Interesting. And then your right click has also got a nice green hue to it as well. Okay, I really like this so far. Right, let's jump back into the default and then let's change the theming ourselves with the look and feel. So let's reapply this one. Click OK. Okay, that's that done. And again, we can just pop open that, which will show us our system monitor. Okay, this is a pretty handy little um, configuration for Openbox, to be honest with you. All right, let's get out of that. Do we have Windows side by side snapping? No, so that's just going to move it across different workspaces. But we do have it assigned to super and left if you want to split windows left and right. Nice. Right, let's jump into LX appearance. So what was our run command? It was super and M. LX appearance is not LX appearance. Or is it? Let me just have a look at that. It is LX appearance. Okay. Let's get out of that and let's open it again with super and M. So let's just type in look. Custom. Okay, it's not doing that for us. What about theme? No. Okay, we'll just uh, we'll jump into the menu and do it. So preferences, customize look and feel. Right, so let's get some arc theming going and see how that looks with this. So we're going to go for arc dark. Click apply. Icon theme. Let's change that to arc as well. Nice. Right, now what we're going to do is open up the open box configuration. So I'm going to imagine that's also in, or is it in here somewhere? Look and feel. No, that's what we were just on. Let's go back into the 
Tests, Applications, and into the Preferences, and see if we can find the Open Box Configuration. Open Box Configuration, there we go. Okay, so let's change the look and feel of the theme to Arc, and then we can get a nice uniform look across the whole of the desktop. So there's Arc Dark. Brilliant. All right, let's open a few things now and see how it all ties things together. So in Applications now, let's open up Firefox. Okay, let's open up. Let's see what PC Man FM looks like. So let's go to our Files Manager now. Okay, that's not quite dark, is it? Is it because it's QT5? Hold on a minute. Do we have QT5 settings? We do here. So style GTK. So we could go through that and get it to look properly if we had the time and we could be bothered. Let's just go into Covantum as well a moment. Let's go back into System Preferences. Is Coventum in here? No, I'll tell you what, let's use Super and M. Coventum Manager. And now let's go to Change Delete Theme and we're going to see if we've got KV Arc on here. We do indeed. So now let's use this theme. Okay, so that's the KV Arc Light. Let's use that theme. Quit, quit. And let's see if Files Manager looks a bit normal now. No, so we'd have to mess around with QT5 settings to get that to look properly with the Arc Dark theme. But no, I really like this so far. Right, so we didn't have any email clients or anything like that, did we? Let's see what HTOP says at the moment. Oh, it's got a bit of a weird layout for HTOP there. So we're currently using 1.10 GB, and does that match up with what our widget says? Hmm, not too sure about that. Right, what we're going to do is do a reboot, get a RAM reading, and then we're going to do an update. And then we're just going to wrap it up there, and we might try a couple of other programs. But so far, I'm actually really quite enjoying this, to be honest with you. Okay, so RAM-wise, we're sitting about just under 600, so we're on 583 megabytes. That's not too bad. We've got a little red icon there, so we better do a little update. But we're going to use their welcome screen to go through that. Why can't we find our welcome screen? So it's called Hello on Manjaro. It's not called Hello on here. <laughs> okay, let's jump through it and see if we can find their welcome screen. Is it in Accessories? Preferences? I'll tell you what we'll do with the control center. Here we go. So let's jump into software and we're gonna to go to software update. So that's gonna open up Pamac Manager and let's just have a little scroll through of what it's actually gonna update. So it's got quite a bit to update there. Did I see JG menu as well? I did indeed. Okay, let's apply that update. Right, so it's quite a bit to get. It's going to remove some stuff as well and it's going to install a load of stuff. Okay, let's click apply. Right, we're going to let that run through. I might pause the video here and then we'll come back to it once this update has finished. Okay, so that update failed when we were using the PAMAC GUI manager so I think there's some conflicting files so we're going to do it in the terminal now and we're just going to see what is actually in conflict right so replace bind tools with extra binds um, yeah why not yeah 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 right so we've got some conflicting packages here so it's got exorg font alias 100 dpi so I tell you what we're just going to go Y as well and then hopefully this update will work. So we're going to let that run through and see how we go. But I thought I will mention that reboot that we did to get a little RAM reading has applied all of the theming correctly. So now we have a nice uniform look across the whole of the desktop with the Arc theme. So I'm really happy with this, to be honest with you. I think I might even go so far as to say I prefer this to Manjaro's own community edition of Openbox. I think this is a really unique and interesting setup of what they've done there. I especially like that you can just scroll there and get a little reading of a system monitor. I very much like these side panels here. And I like the way they've set it up with DRUN as well to get to your applications. And I even like the right click there with the little search at the top. In fact, there's not a lot I don't like, to be honest with you. We might just have to play around with this a bit more off camera and see what else we can do with it. So it appears that the update is working absolutely fine. So we were just getting some conflicted packages there. Did I just see SnapD? Okay, so it has Snaps installed out of the box as well. I think Manjaro does now as well, doesn't it? And we haven't checked out the Alt Tab Switcher. Okay, so it just uses the um, sort of lined Alt Tab Switcher that you'll see in other desktops. And it sort of 
darkens out the applications that are unfocused. So our focus window is currently normal. If we go into there, I'll then lighten it up, and then that is back into one focused view. Nice, I really like it. Okay, so it appears this update has run absolutely fine. So I'm going to end the video there, but thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and join the Discord. There's a link in the description. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.